In terms of the half year result, a solid result, a um, bit boring what I say, but uh, no surprises, solid uh, volumes as well. Um, from a guidance perspective, we retain guidance at 880 to 930 million for the full year. Underlying EBIT was up 12%, um, a number of factors contributing to the positive uplift. In particular, network, the finalization of UT5. So the submission was made to the regulator in December of 2019, um, and we had approval. Again, a reminder, it's the new 10-year agreement that we agreed with our customers, as opposed to the traditional four-year reset. So more certainty for longer. And also a, a very small reset in 2023. So we had the positive impact of that back end of uh, the, second, the first half. Also, with bulk and um, the transformation that we've been undergoing, we talked about a three-year transformation, a number of loss-making contracts, et cetera, well ahead of expectation. So that was a, a positive surprise for the market. So the two contributed to that positive outcome. With coal, volumes were flat um, year on year, half on half, and um, I guess a number of contributing factors. If you split Queensland and New South Wales, Queensland, some production issues for some of our customers, some maintenance work that was done, uh, a little bit of impact um, from some employee shortages with one of the particular customers. So slightly down in Queensland, but offset by a positive uplift in New South Wales. So flat at the half. And what we did do was uh, revise our volumes down to 210 to 220, so 10 million tonne reduction. Um, given the, the lower first half, there's only so much you can sort of push through in, in a second half. But again, we're not hearing any signs uh, of concern from our customers at this point. Orders are, are still um, as we would expect. So statutory impact was up 51%. Uh, um, again, positive impact of um, the comments I've just made on earnings but also we had an additional one-off benefit from the sale of our rail grinding business. Free cash flow up 26% um, to 465 million and uh, ROIC improved by 50 basis points uh, to 10.5%. So very, very strong uh, result. And as a result, we announced a dividend of 13.7 <coughs> cents per share, 100% payout, 70% uh, franked, and that uh, is now five years of 100% payout that, that we have um, given. With the rail grinding sale, we were able to increase our buyback. So we had a buyback uh, in place that we announced last year of 300 million. As a result of the sale, we've been able to increase that to 400 million. Um, and that is now a well progressed given the market volatility over the last few weeks. We're now um, almost with only 50 million to go in terms of execution on the buyback. So again, um, very much uh, delivering what, what we promised uh, to the market. In addition, we had um, the legal restructure um, we talked about last year that is in place. The new credit ratings uh, have been confirmed by the rating agencies and that 1.2 billion of capacity is uh, still available and that is on top of the 400 million buyback that we're doing uh, at, uh, for this financial year. So that we've talked about as progressively increasing um, uh, releasing that capacity over a number of years. So. Uh, in the form of buybacks, uh, most likely, if there are no alternatives in terms of growth projects. From a guidance perspective, as I mentioned, the volumes were um, reduced to 210 to uh, 220, again, because of the, the sort of softer first half. However, we said two weeks ago, and I'll, I'll answer the question because most people will uh, ask, coronavirus, any impact? Um, we haven't seen any signs from customers in terms of um, reduction in uh, requests for volumes at this stage. When asked the question, we said the there won't be a positive impact or neutral. Um, the, the difficulty is working out what that impact would be, um, given the complexity and um, the deep supply chain um, markets that we have. Um, so what we... Um, you, you could probably look at it two ways. Um, the price is holding up. And if you think about thermal coal, Australia exports 200 million tonnes. China produces and uses around the 2.6 to 2.8 billion tonnes. So production has reduced domestically. That could result, on, result in higher seaborne demand, but it, it may not if supply chains become tight. So that's why it's very difficult to work out which way <coughs> to go. 
So customer orders, as I said, and shipping queues, we can't see any signs at this point. But again, um, it's something that we're watching. The, the situation is fluid and it is impacting a number of, of industries. Um, and just a reminder, 20% of volume goes to China. So it's not the largest customer in terms of the export market. And again, just as a, a final point, just to remind you, the business, um, the, I guess, defensive nature of the business. So if you take half of the earnings of the group, uh, is network. And if the volumes drop this year, they will the, the shortfall in revenue will get recovered in two years' time. So you're left whole, MPV um, adjusted, MPV net, uh, positive with uh, WAC adjusted. And then from the above rail, um, coal part of the business, we have capacity charge, which is 50 to 60% um, fixed. So hence, there is an impact of volumes, but it's not to the same degree as you would expect. Hence, quite a defensive play, um, very stable, um, boring, as I said, uh, in terms of uh, earnings.